Hi, today I wanted to introduce the uh, TS-410e NAS. Um, this is a uh, all SSD, completely silent um, NAS that we, we offer. So it's got four um, SATA SSD bays um, up front um, and you've got the heatsink chassis so there's absolutely uh, no noise from the unit, no moving parts inside. Um, obviously when paired with SATA SSDs they have no moving parts either. Um, it's got a couple of 2.5 gig LAN ports as well as HDMI um, and I'll run through the quick specs here, show you a, a bit about the uh, the back and the front of the unit, um, some SSDs we recommend and then I'll go through a first time setup of, uh, of the NAS itself for you and then um, I'll add a couple of extra features in there like a virtual machine, um, some surveillance, I'll, I'll show you how to do all of that. Um, so here we'll jump straight into the uh, the CPU that's powering the unit. So this one's got a uh, Intel uh, Celeron J series CPU. Uh, so that's a quad core CPU, the J6412, 2.6 gigahertz, um, and it only uses about 10 watts of power at absolute maximum throughput on the uh, the processor. So it's uh, it's very efficient, very low power usage, absolutely ideal for a um, a NAS with no active cooling um, by using the heatsink chassis. Um, here's a quick look at the uh, the back and the front of the unit with all the uh, the ports and lights uh, labeled up. So on the front you've got the status lights of all four SSD bays, as well as a, a LAN and status light. Um, around the back there's the power button, reset button, you've got your HDMI port there at the top. Um, you've got the pair of 2.5 gig LAN ports around the back as well as four 10 gig uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports as well. Um, the barrel jack for the power consumption um, is a, uh, a screw-on uh, barrel jack, so if you want to make sure it's never falling out when you push that in, you can screw the, uh, the knurled nut um, on there so that it doesn't pop out uh, with an accidental pull. Um, and a Kensington lock slot, and you've got the measurements down there, so it's a very small unit um, for those that wanted to see that. Um, here's what it looks like with the, uh, the front panel unscrewed. Um, so you've got the, uh, the four main bays and you can see the lights. Um, but it's uh, it's very easy easy to uh, put the the drives into those trays. Just uh, up to four screws per SSD, and they just push straight into the front of the unit. Here's some performance testing with the uh, two 2.5 gig LAN ports uh, bonded together. So you can see the uh, the environment we tested with down at the bottom. But we are basically able to fully max the uh, the uh, both 2.5 gig LAN ports for maximum throughput. Um, so over 500 megabytes uh, megabits per second um, for for each there. So nice and fast. Sorry, megabytes per second. So it's really fast. Um, able to uh, fully utilize that to, to get the most performance out of it. Um, some recommended SSDs we've got here are the uh, the Exascend um, SI3 series. Uh, so these are industrial grade um, SSDs. Of course, um, will work really great with these. And these are the ones uh, I have installed in this unit. Uh, these SSDs have an operating temperature that's incredibly wide, minus 40 degrees Celsius all the way up to plus 70. Um, so very, very good SSDs to use in this. I think I've got four uh, 960 gig uh, versions of these uh, Exascend SI3 uh, drives in this NAS. Um, so these are the, the ones I'm going to, to illustrate and you can of course fit four of those. Uh, for anyone interested in the uh, the process to install the SSDs, um, it's safest to put the unit on its side, uh, unscrew the four screws, uh, pull the SSD trays out and put the drives in with their screws. Uh, insert the, the drives back in and screw the front back on. Once it's all done, um, you can do a few things with um, how you want to position it. Uh, there are screw holes on the bottom, so if you wanted to do visa mounting or something like that, you could use the visa mounts on the back, uh, the screw holes for that. Um, or you can use the provided um, metal stands, um, which have little rubber pads on it, uh, so it uh, really grips onto the, uh, to the NAS quite well. So that, that just drops straight in there if you wanted to do that as well. So now we'll move on to the uh, the first time setup uh, of the NAS. So this is just sort of straight out the box. This is what it would look like. You get the uh, setup wizard. It is QTS based. You cannot run QUTS Hero on this. It's uh, it's only for QTS. Uh, so here I'm going to do the uh, start smart installation button. Um, I'll check for a firmware update. I'm already running the latest one, so there's no option to, to choose the latest available version. Um, no need to upload a, a manual firmware there either. So I'm going to say current version. That's fine. Um, moving on to the next screen, once to name the NAS, and as usual, I will just uh, name it the uh, the same as the model number, uh, username, put my name, uh, password, type that in. Okay, we'll click next. Um, I'm happy with the uh, the default settings here for the time zone, so I'll click next. Um, I'm not going to change the IP address here. I'm just going to leave that and obtain automatically. 
just see if you're happy with the settings you've done and then click apply. A little warning that it's going to erase all the data off the drives you've got inserted, which I'm happy to do, so I'll hit initialize. Uh, so this is now going to run through the uh, preparing the NAS setup wizard, uh, getting the drives ready uh, for the operating system install here. Um, so I'm just going to uh, go quiet while this is, this is happening and we'll fast forward the, uh, the wait here so you don't have to wait for that. Okay, so that's the uh, NAS completely set up there. We're going to go to go to NAS management, and uh, now we have to go to the login page uh, and log in with the credentials we set up in the wizard there. So I'm just going to log in with Craig and the password that I set. Click OK to that. Um, so now we're going to log in for the very first time into the NAS. We've got some pop-ups letting us know how to use the NAS. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go to the storage and snapshot screen. Um, and within storage and snapshots, um, you get a few uh, bits of information the first time you open them. Um, I'm going to go take a look straight away at the disks. Um, so here are the disks, you can see the Exascend SI3 drive. So I've got four of the 960 gig ones in there. Um, so that's what I'm running on this NAS. Uh, so with these four drives, this is what I'm going to set up the storage on. Uh, no need to do anything like caching or anything here. I've already got all SSDs, so it's just going to be fast all the time without needing to use a cache. So if I go to the storage slash snapshot screen on the left, I'm going to do a new storage pool. Um, no need to do tiering. Again, I've only got one performance of drives in this. They're all SATA SSDs, so no need to do that. I'm going to do next. I'm going to pick all the disks. I don't need to keep any disks free for any other purpose. So I'm going to tick all the disks, and it's going to choose RAID 5 for me. Um, for the speed of this video, I am going to change it to RAID 0. Don't recommend it, but I would recommend you do at least RAID 5. Uh, but I'm going to use RAID 0 for this, just so that the, uh, the, the NAS isn't doing a RAID rebuild as soon as I finish this. Uh, so I'm going to click next. Um, for me, I don't like doing the alert threshold on the pool itself. It's entirely up to you if you want to do it, so I'll untick that. Um, and I'll leave some space here reserved uh, for snapshots. So we'll click Next. I'm happy with those settings, so I'm going to click Create. It's going to just warn you that you're going to lose all data on those disks if there was anything on them. I'm going to click OK to that. Uh, once it's finished creating the storage pool, um, it will then let me uh, create a volume. It'll actually pop up a prompt for a new volume um, so I can create that. Uh, and the volume is where the data lives. So the storage pool is um, uh, where the RAID is applied and the volumes live within the storage pool. So any volumes that you create within that pool will share the same RAID. Um, so you don't have to do a new RAID for every volume you create if you do it this way. Uh, so we'll just let that finish and then we'll uh, we'll create the new volume. And now the storage pool has uh, co completed creating, uh, we're going to click the new volume prompt that's popped up, because I do want a new volume. Um, so you can choose between thin, thick, or static. Uh, for me, I recommend the top two, so either thin or, th or thick, depending what you need. I'm going to leave it on the default of thin for now. Um, just click Next. Um, it's saying you must monitor the space with thin provisioning, so this means that you, you must keep an eye on your actual physical space used. Um, so that's where the uh, alert thresholds can come in handy. Um, I'm going to click OK on that one. Now it's asking how big do we want the volume. Uh, so for the first volume, um, I'll set that to, uh, to a nice round number 500 gigs. <coughs> Excuse me. If you wanted to encrypt the volume, things like that, this is where you do it. And there's a few advanced settings you can pop out. Um, I'm going to leave everything uh, where it is on this one, except the capacity down to 500 gigs. So I'm going to click Next. Now I'm happy with all the uh, the settings there. Got a snapshot schedule created. So every day at uh, 1 a.m., that's fine. Um, so I'm going to click Next. Happy with all my choices there. So I'm going to click Finish. Um, so now it's going to go and create that first volume. Um, it'll create the uh, the first uh, default share. You can use the NAS while it's doing this. Um, do other things if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to wait for this to finish. So we'll wait for the uh, the, the green ready tick here uh, to, to come up. And then we'll come back and we'll go through uh, some other settings. Um, I'll create um, a virtual machine on the NAS. Um, this NAS does have 8 gig of RAM, so I've got plenty to be able to create a virtual machine. Um, and I'll also uh, add our surveillance software, QVR release. Um, so I'll add that so that we can uh, add a couple of cameras in there so I can show you that it's doing everything all at once. Very capable NAS. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now we can see that everything's showing as ready. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this uh, notice board here, some extra notifications that popped up while we were doing that. 
Um, so the top one is just getting started, but then as you can see, we've already completed one step. We've got a tick next to creating a storage space. Uh, you can add your QNAP ID, set security policies, and some other things. You can do all of these later if you want. Um, it's letting you know about the help sensor, that it's a valuable resource if you need to use it for any assistance. Uh, notification sensor uh, warnings there popping up saying that Facebook's changed the security policy, which is fine. Uh, malware remover has been installed um, and it's also run its first scan. We can see that down at the bottom so we can close those two out. Um, and it's also telling you about any firmware update settings that you may have. So firmware up settings, uh, when they're um, available, it will automatically install them. You can go in there and change that setting if you don't want that. Um, and prompting you again just to make sure you've got two-step verification enabled and any app updates that you may have. So they're all there. I'm just going to dismiss them all for now. Um, what I'm actually going to do now is um, I'm going to go and install um, a few different apps so that I can just show you what the NAS is capable of. Um, I'll do these off screen because I've got other videos on the channel um, that show you how to do a virtualization station with virtual machines and setting up surveillance. Um, but I will go into the App Center um, and I'll show you um, me, me installing a, at least uh, one of the applications. So if I come into Utilities, I can scroll down. There's Virtualization Station. Uh, so I'll get that installed. Um, and also I can click across to the, uh, the Surveillance option. Um, and install our QVR Elite software. Now when I choose to install this, it is going to tell me there is a dependent application needed, which is Container Station, uh, which I do want to, to install. So I'm going to say, yes, you can go and install that. So it'll install a total of three apps here. So Container Station, Virtualization Station, and QVR Elite. Um, I'll come back once they're all installed um, and I've set them up with, uh, with some uh, some applications and some virtual machines and some cameras connected. So uh, I'll stop the video there for a bit and when we come back well, I'll give you a quick demo of the unit with everything running. So a little while later I've got the uh, the NAS configured for a few things. If I go check the uh, the dashboard uh, we can see I'm using a decent amount of the uh, provided 8 gig of RAM now. So I've got 69-71% used there. Um, so now I've got a couple of uh, fairly intensive applications running. So the first one we'll look at is Virtualization Station. Uh, so within Virtualization Station, I installed a Windows 11 virtual machine and I gave it four gigs of RAM. Uh, so we can take a peek into that and have a look at it. Um, so this is just full Windows 11. Um, so you can use this however you want to use it. Um, so it's a, a fully fledged uh, Windows VM that's that's running on the on the NAS itself. Access to absolutely everything that you'd want to on the uh, uh, the unit itself. Um, so this is uh, running natively. I've done a, a pass through connection on the CPU, uh, but again, I gave uh, four gigs of RAM um, into this virtual machine uh, so that we can use it. So we've got absolutely access to everything that we'd want to. Um, uh, on this uh, virtual machine. Um, so that's still running, I'm not shutting it down, it's still still there consuming resources. Um, and again I also installed QVR Elite that had the dependent app of Container Station. So if I look into QVR Elite um, I added some recording storage to it. So we can see here we've got the recording storage so I allocated it some space off the SSDs. Um, and within here um, if I go to camera settings um, I added in uh, two of the cameras I've got uh, around the house. Um, so they're currently uh, uh, recording into the into the NAS. If I pull in the uh, the client software, uh, we can see here it says TS410E at the top. So this is uh, recording into the uh, into this NAS. Uh, right now I've got the driveway camera. Um, I can go look at the uh, different camera here. Um, and if I want to see both, I can just drag them in and see both different um, cameras if I want to. If I don't like the view, I can just drag it around to a different location, put one above the other. Um, but that's how um, you, you can uh, add different cameras. So again, I'm recording um, uh, two cameras into this NAS. Um, and I'm also uh, running a Windows 11 virtual machine. Um, and there is still um, some RAM and resources available uh, for other things. So we can see the CPU, about 40% used there. Uh, it goes up and down as you do different things. So just drop right off there. Um, and I've used about 73% of the RAM. So there's still RAM available to run some other services and some other functions. Um, and the system, there you go, 39 degrees Celsius. It's not running hot at all, even though it's got no um, active cooling. Um, so very easy to do. Uh, so again, this is the uh, the TS-410E, uh, uh, a completely silent, uh, completely uh, uh, passively cooled NAS. Um, it's got four um, of the uh, Exascend Industrial SSDs in there, and it's working absolutely great, um, nice and fast. And again, with, with a NAS like this, you wouldn't need anything like SSD cache or anything, because you're already running everything on SSDs. 
Um, so that's the, the TS410E. If anybody has any questions at all about this NAS, please do ask them in the comments section down below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye.